you know, this stuff doesn't smell bad at all. It actually smells quite nice, but oh my gosh, this is so terrible right now. You know, you're probably wondering, what is this guy even doing? He's spraying all this stuff around. And well, the reason why is because roughly around a month, month and a half ago, yeah, I fell sick with COVID and it absolutely sucked. You know, at first the symptoms weren't too bad. I had a little bit of a cough, runny nose, you know, a little bit of a scratchy throat, you know, cold-like symptoms. And then after like day two, whew, the symptoms went downhill, had a 102 Fahrenheit fever, went down to 99, which was like low grade, and back up to 102, and then back down to 99. It was a constant fluctuation with temperature. I barely ate anything. I didn't feel the need to eat anything. I had no hunger or was I even thirsty? And it it was really bad. And there was even a time where it even got so bad, I got COVID pneumonia. I'd be waking up at four o'clock in the morning, coughing my lungs out, constantly feeling fatigued and tired and weak. Half the time I couldn't get out of bed. It was just, it was just a nightmare. And I would never ever wish it upon anybody. So for about a month and a half, I wasn't able to post anything. And then even after the whole COVID thing, right around maybe a couple days after I started feeling really good and I got a negative test, my voice was just shot. I couldn't talk, my voice my voice sounded like this. It, it really sucked and I really wanted to post some videos, I wanted to create some stuff, I wanted to, you know, have something to talk about, some tutorials, maybe do a vlog or whatnot, but it was just, it was just not a good time. And it was super frustrating because I wanted to post some content. I, I was starting to feel better, I wanted to, you know, Finally be able to get back into the swing of things and create a video and well, it, it just wasn't happening. And so I just waited until I got my voice back and well, here we are. You know, I've heard many other content creators say, don't worry about talking about why you were gone or why you left or why you took a hiatus or took a break or what happened or whatever. And don't apologize for being gone or whatever. But personally, I think that this is a pretty crazy topic and I just wanted to say like, I am so sorry that all this is happening and that it all happened. You know, this 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 thing I'm sitting on, it's, it's a cedar chest and it's so squeaky. It's, it's so annoying. But we're here and we're back in the swing of things. Also, check out these new things I got. Check out these mocks. These are the most comfortable things that I've ever owned and I have no regrets to getting them. And look at this window light. It is so nice. By the way, that is one thing that I never ever stress enough about and that is talking about how good window lighting is you know I've talked about it in a couple other videos but yeah window light it is probably the best hands-down piece of equipment for your arsenal to light your photos videos whatever because well one it's natural so of course everything's gonna look great and natural and two it's free you don't have to spend anything on it. You know, you wouldn't believe how many times that I've used window light just to light my photos or even my videos. Even when I first started doing YouTube, this is me <laughs> sitting by a window, always trying to find some light because, well, I kind of live in a cave. This room's really dark and just the way that my house is positioned, the sun never, almost never like shines directly through any of the windows. So it kind of sucks, but just find some window light and you're golden. You know, I've even asked other photographers, for example, my really good friend, Josiah, who lives up in BC, Canada, which by the way, super jealous. I've asked him, hey, how did you light that shot? It looks so good. What did you use for lighting? And he's just like, dude, I just put it by a window. And I used a little LED cube, like a Luma cube or an Aperture MC, just add some fill light to it. And yeah, it worked out great. And I was just like, blown away which by the way speaking of Josiah everybody go down into the description below check out his Instagram the dude has phenomenal work and he deserves so much more recognition than what he has go shed some love tell him that Mikey sent you hell even put it in the comments to say Mikey sent me or we can even start a hashtag hashtag Mikey sent me let's do it because his work is always on point and always blows me away it is so so good so Head on down to the description below, check out his IG, shed some love, hashtag Mikey sent me, yeah.
let's do it. But we're gonna be talking about my breakdown process of, you know, using some stuff like window lighting and some other little things that you can maybe find lying around your house that you can use to help make your photos just a little bit better. And the best part about it is, it is so easy. You wouldn't even believe how easy it is. And you don't even have to really spend much money, if any money at all. You can even use things that are just lying around your house and be creative with it. But the first thing I need to do is I need to think of Hmm, what is the foundation? What is the, you know, baseline of the story? Where is it taking place? And I'm personally thinking maybe something like something in a box. I love boxes. So I'm probably thinking about something in a box on like a table or, you know, something that looks like it's sitting on a desk in a cabin in the middle of, I don't know, in the winter on an early Saturday morning. So I got an idea. All right, so what we have here, this right here is a piece of a butcher block. Now I got this from Lowe's last year when I decided that I'm going to build this desk. And that happened to be the leftover piece of said butcher block. And instead of me throwing it out, I figured, no, I'm going to save it. So then that way, if I'm gonna do any type of product photography or flat lay photography, you know, if I want it to feel like it's on a desk or seem like it's on a table or something, I'm not going to you know, move this huge thing because it is so heavy or clear anything off and then have to take things off, put it back on. It, it just, it's a hassle. So I figured I'm gonna save a piece so then that way I can have it as that foundation, if you will. Now that I chose the foundation or the background of the entire scene, if you will, it's time to now choose what do I want as the subject of the photo. Now it could be anything. It could be uh, a knife, it could be a ring, it could even be a necklace, which, by the way, have an idea. And the sun came out, so this is pretty exciting. But yeah, I have an idea on what I could use. I picked this up not too long ago, which is a necklace from Clocks and Colors. And for those who don't know who Clocks and Colors is, they're a company that specializes in creating handcrafted jewelry like necklaces and rings and other cool little accessories like dice and whatnot. They even have some merch. Um, not sponsored, by the way, but I love what they do and what they provide. And this is a piece that they collaborated with one of my Favorite photographers, if not one of the reasons why I got into photography and YouTube, which is Peter McKinnon, and I mean everybody knows who Peter is, but I love pine trees, I love the mountains, and when I see this, I'm like, I gotta pick this up. So I think this is going to be perfect for the scene as the subject. Now that I have the main focus of the scene, which is of course the necklace, it's time to build the story. It's time to help tell the story through other items that can complement the necklace. Now granted, if you're working with a brand and you know they're providing said product to you, you already know what you're going to be getting. So you can plan ahead of time and try to figure out and map out what you can use to help complement that product. But earlier I said that I wanted this theme to be a desk in an old cabin somewhere. So that means old items, antiques, rusted tools, you know, maybe somebody pocket dumped something onto a desk or a table and just completely forgot about it. You know, what would you take to a cabin somewhere? Maybe you have a cabin. But what are some complimentary items that I can use to help tell the story of the necklace or the pendant, if you will? So I'm personally thinking like an everyday carry pocket dump, like I said earlier, of what I would take to a cabin. What are the things I would just throw onto a desk or a table of my own that would help tell the story as if it was my own cabin, if you will. As well as some other things that you would find in a cabin. Yeah. Get some stuff out of the pockets. Now for this, in this toolbox, this is actually, like I said, a toolbox, super old. I've had this box for a while. It looks like a cigar box of some sort. Not exactly too sure, but it's pretty old. And then of course, there's this, it looks like a jewelry box. I'm not going to be using this just because it just blends in too much to the scene. So we're gonna put that off to the side. Now everything in here, I have an old guitar rag from a, from a cleaning kit, an old map, and then I love rope. Rope just adds so much texture and story to the scene because it could be anything. It could be something from a boat, it could be something from a pulley that you know, maybe somebody had some type of rig rigged up on their homestead. And then, of course, when you try to think of cabins, what did they use to light up cabins back in the day? Which would be lanterns. Now granted, some people might use lanterns still because in some hunting cabins there are no electricity, but this right here, 
figured this would definitely add to the scene. Plus, the pendant is green, so it would definitely complement each other well. Next, we have this little key here. And then last but not least, we have the toolbox. Now, what is so great about this toolbox is just in the toolbox alone, there are so many opportunities and different things that you could do. You can shoot within the toolbox. You can shoot something coming out of the toolbox and you, the sky is the limit. And then of course, you can always just flip it around and this is also where the magic happens. And that is where all of the textures and the fine details lie. And the textures, oh, don't even get me started on the textures. Look at everything that's going on here. You have the box itself, it's old, it's beat up. It looks like it's seen some miles. Then you have these little screws that are all rusted and things are cracked. And then you have little holes everywhere all over the box and the stamps. The stamps alone tell a story. It's just so, so good. And textures, they are the secret seasoning or the icing on the cake that just makes it that much better. So I'm gonna start off with this toolbox. Here. Here. So this rope. Separated. What's really fun is that not only am I building the scene, but I'm also working within the scene. I'm manipulating the entire situation. There are different angles that I can go with. There are different perspectives, different parts of the story. You can build little mini stories within the entire story, if you will. What I wanna do here is I think I'm going to put the pendant in between the rope here and just lay and drape that chain ever so slightly. Have it nice and loose. I have this shot exactly how I want it, but it needs something more. The lighting is just a little too flat. Now, granted, of course, we can't control exactly what is coming in from the window, but you can have another light source handy, like something that's like a NAND light or an Aperture MC, which are both lighting tools that are handheld. You can pretty much walk around the scene and control the lighting how you want to. If you don't have anything like that, be creative. Use something like a desk lamp and find a way to kind of diffuse the light. I've used the desk lamp so many times when I first started getting into photography and product photography to where I would use a desk lamp and then I would get something like a sheet of some sort and put it in front of the desk lamp to diffuse that light and make it nice and soft. Or you can use something like a flashlight or maybe even, maybe even a wax melter. Check that off. The wax off nice and steady. There we go. Now, what I'm going to use is this lamp as an illusion, as if the lantern is lit. Because at the right angle, bam! Total difference. Loving it at different angles and over the head, overview stuff, bird's eye view, get different perspectives, work around the scene, really experiment, have fun with it. Now as I said earlier, you can really play around with the scene, you can add things, you can subtract things, you can change the entire scene up but still keep the same theme. So now that I have a couple shots of the pendant in between the rope and it's a very tight shot, I think I'm gonna do something that's more wide and have a flat lay set up here and I'm gonna bring in the knife. I'm gonna be bringing in the notebook and the key and the guitar rag. Remember, you can build little stories within the entire story. The sky's the limit. This is what was going on in my head. I love when you can 
build a scene exactly to how it was in your head and you get that shot and it's just perfect. Like, this is the shot. Oh, I'm so pumped. I absolutely love what is going on with the lantern. I can't get enough of it. The light just, it's just so good. Plus of what's going on with the window. Hmm. Love it. Also, Jess, if you are seeing this, this, wait till you see this, dude. You are going to be pumped. Also, keep in mind, if you are going to be shooting with something pretty tight, like a 50 mil or an 85 or a 105 mil, make sure that you have enough clearance away from the scene. So now you can get as much of what's going on in the frame. There have been times where I would actually have to stand on a chair, for example, for the thumbnail for my What's in My Camera Bag video back in 2021. I actually had to stand on top of a chair while I had everything laid out on my floor because I wanted to get as much as I can in the frame. And the times that you don't get everything in frame, that's okay. Just move things around, be creative, try to think outside the box, and try to make it work, you know? And sometimes you just don't get everything there. And if that happens, sometimes it actually adds to the photo, sometimes it adds a little bit of a creative flair, sometimes it doesn't, but that's okay. You know, then you could just put it in post and you can maybe crop something out or, you know, maybe do something in Photoshop. But regardless, don't really stress about it and just have fun with it because isn't that what this is about? Having fun. That's what we're doing. Photography, it's fun. One thing that I am definitely, definitely guilty of, it's been a problem since day one, is having too much in the scene when I first start out. Having too many items try to tell a story and the key is less is more. Because I'll get like eight or 10 different things that are gonna help tell the story, throw it all out like onto the scene and then be like, yeah, this is gonna look great. No, <laughs> it doesn't because then I have to start taking things out, process of elimination, there's too much going on, it's too scrunched up, it's too tight, which definitely leads to the next thing that I wanna talk about, which is making sure that there is breathing room for the main focus of the photo. I always try to make sure that everything is balanced out and there's wiggle room. You need to know exactly what you're looking at because if everything is too tight and you know too scrunched up and if there's too much going on, you're not gonna know what to look at. You're not gonna know what the story is about. Like you can't have a story unless there is a subject of the story. Other than that, it's just a scene, which of course, if that's what you're going for, that's cool. But you know, if you want to help tell a story of a certain product or a certain person, you need to have the main focus. And then of course you need to keep things balanced. You can't have too much on the left side of the scene or the right side of the scene. You can't have too much of one, one particular object, maybe like two or three knives in the upper left corner, unless you're like really trying to show a collection of what you have, which is cool. But you don't want to have imbalance of things. You wanna have things nice and balanced out, nice and even and flow-like because that's what's going to make it look great. So the three things that I definitely try to make sure that I have is less is more, breathing room, and balance. Woohoo, it is time to edit. I figured since I'm making this video about the entire process of me, you know, building a scene and choosing the product as the subject or what have you, and of course, you know, telling a story with it and doing things within different, you know, perspectives and angles and trying different things and being creative, I'm also gonna show the process of me editing as well. And the shot that I'm going to be editing here is, well, it's the shot. That's the one I'm talking about. That's the shot. Oh, I'm so pumped. This is gonna be fun. Really? What? While I'm talking? Talk about rude. Oh yeah. Sorry. Anyways, the first thing that I do is... What? Can you I'm please hungry, not man. interrupt I'm sorry. me? sorry. Oh, you want some? No, I don't want any. Are you sure you don't want any? Come on, man. You <laughs> yes, know you want I'm some. sure. I don't want any. Thanks, but no thanks. So you don't want any? No, I, mean, I don't want any. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I don't want any. The first thing that I always do when it comes down to flat light style photos is I'll head down here to the transform tool and I'll click auto. And what this does is not only does it kind of level out the photo and keep it nice and even, but it also kind of eliminates any type of warping or distortion, which in this case you don't want because you want it flat. It's a flat light, it's a flat light photo. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my preset juniper. And I have been loving this preset lately. It's by far one of my favorites. It's this is looking great. Whoa, 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 wait. Remember when you made a video talking about how people shouldn't be using presets? You know, I know. 
I made a video on why people should not be using presets, which by the way, if you want to check that out, you can just, just check that right there. But I know, I know. I mean, look at it though. This, this is, this is great. This is a great sure? starting point. To me, it looks, it looks a little too, I don't know. No, I'm not really feeling it. You know, don't you have somewhere to be? Um, no, not really. I mean, you can go hang out on the couch or maybe go for a walk or something. Actually, I think I will. Now, if you decide to use presets, you have to keep in mind that they do not affect every single photo the same way because every single photo could be different. You know, there's different lighting and there's different white balance and the list goes on and on and on and on. So it can really affect your photos differently based off of, you know, these different things that are going on in the photo. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten my tone curve here because I want to bring down the contrast and I want to also hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and bring this down in the whites to make sure that I'm not going overboard with the whites. Do the same with the blacks. Don't want to go overboard with them. I like to bring down a little bit because I, I like my I like my blacks really dark. And then I go down to my shadows. I even bring that up just a tad. Highlights are looking pretty good. And then I want all of my contrast to be within my tone curve. So if you hold Alt and you make these dots, you can actually have more control and be more precise when holding Alt or Option when you're pretty much using these little dots here. So on these points, I'm gonna be bringing down my shadows just a little bit. I'm gonna be bringing down my mid-tones just eight and and then my highlights bring them down not too much bring down the whites just a little bit and up those blacks quite a bunch around 18 that looks good and then bring down the darker parts of my shadows because i think that contrast can cool that is looking great and then uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be bringing down the clarity. About five, negative. And then of course, with saturation, I like to bring that down because I feel that can kind of go overboard sometimes and it's a little bit too much. And then vibrancy is very subtle. So I'll bring that up. It's looking pretty good. And then next what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna be bringing up the temperature just a little bit. I like to use the arrows because they have some pretty good increments. And then go to tint, maybe bring this up to maybe 13. And we're gonna come down here to the HSL. Now with the HSL, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the aquas. Okay, that is definitely the pendant. Bring up those aquas just a little bit because I really wanna show what that's going on there. Gradients in this preset. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and play with the greens, bring them down because I want that nice and muted in that lantern. Same yellows. Let's see what they bring. I just bring it up to right about. Where was I now? Yeah, 30. Bring this up to maybe 22 or 25. That's good. Bring this up not too much in the oranges because those are pretty good right there. Yellows are gonna bring up that luminance just a tad. Now I'm gonna go down to the color grading. Now what I like to use the color grading for is if I have a preset that is already set, that I have all these adjustments, you know, already made, sometimes I like to add a little bit more within the highlights and the shadows. So in this case, I want to actually add a little bit of blues within the highlights. Not too much, probably like around five. Bring this right there. And then with the shadows, I want to add just, just a tiny bit of oranges nothing too drastic 
very subtle. I'm going to bring that balance over towards the highlights. that up blending them together sharpen hold alt or option on your keyboard what this is doing is this is allowing you to see exactly what is being sharpened so whatever is white is exactly what's being sharpened so in this case I want to bring this up pretty high not too high but pretty high right around there bring up the detail click on the pendant there I bring up the detail just a little bit, I bring up the radius just a tad, and then I like to usually have my sharpening right around 62. And then sometimes I like to come down to the calibration and bring down, we'll bring down that blue just a little bit. Bring down the blue just a little bit more of the hue. And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to add some masks and masking is where you basically affect a certain part of the photo. So I want to come to here, click on linear gradient and I want to apply one right here. Now, whatever is blue is being affected. I'm going to be bringing down the dehaze because I want to add just a little bit of like this fake light, bring up the exposure just a tad. Then, I'm gonna go back down here a little bit more. It's looking pretty good. Bring the clarity a little bit down. Okay, that's good. And then, I'm going to get another linear gradient, come from the upper left part of the photo, and have this come down pretty far down, feather it out, nice. And I want to implement some more warmth that's coming in from this side of the photo because the lantern is there and I'm giving this fake lantern lighting effect and I want it to be pretty prominent. So I'm going to bring up the temperature ever so slightly. It's looking pretty good. Probably about 25. Might bring this down just a little bit more. And then I'm going to Maybe, let's see what exposure does if I bring that up just a little bit. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Maybe even just have it at 0 0.05 because that subtleness is, it definitely makes a difference. So remember, less is more. So we're gonna go to get another linear gradient and we're gonna be coming up from this part of the photo. Sometimes, sometimes I even just play around and see what I can get. You know, sometimes it just it just works. Sometimes you already know what you're gonna be doing. But in this case, I'm going to bring this up right here. Bring it up a little more. I really want it to feather in there. I don't want it to be harsh. I want it to be really subtle. Okay, good. And then now I'm going to get a rate. I'm going to get a radiant, 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 radial mask. <laughs> Can't talk today at all, but that's okay. Right click, invert, and now we're going to make a custom vignette. Once again, I like to use arrows because it gives you nice increments and things are quite, uh, quite even, if you will. Yeah, no odd numbers here. I'm one of those people that are like, can't have an odd number. Volume has to be set at either either zero or five or 10. And I know that five is an odd number, but, or, you know, you get it. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, uh, sometimes things are just, just, it's just the little things like that. Anyways, this, anyways, the radio mask is going a little too harsh. So we're gonna be bringing this down to probably up around 60, yeah, that's good. And then we're going to get a brush tool, zoom in, and then we're going to brush that green. And what I wanna do with that part of the pendant is I want to just affect the green. You can even erase it. Uh, 
Okay, that's good. And then you're going to click on these three dots here, where it says brush, intersect mask with, with color range. And what this is doing is you are basically choosing a mask within a mask to affect the mask. So like right now I picked color range, which is going to allow me to choose the range of the color that I'm selecting. So we're going to click on the green of the pendant that's going to pop up. And then this refine tool is going to allow me to really get in close to that edge and get in between all those little cracks and whatnot. We can even try getting that little part down there. Yeah, see, look at that. None of the trees are being affected. And if they are, you barely can see it anyway, so it's not really gonna make a difference. So we're gonna go to, um, we're going to go to the exposure, bring this up, just a hint, bring up the clarity, probably plus five, texture plus two, and then play with, maybe even add plus two saturation, zoom out, close the masks, and that is looking great. But there's one more thing that needs to be done, and that is sending this baby over to Photoshop. So we're going to right click, go to edit in Photoshop 2022, and now we wait. Well, we officially have arrived in Photoshop and it is time to now remove this wax melter that's up here in this left corner. Almost forgot what it was. <laughs> and what we're going to do and how we are going to do that is hold Shift Control Alt N to make a new layer, Shift Control Alt E to paste the previous layer or the background onto this layer. And then we're going to zoom in by pressing Z, coming up here. And then we're going to press S for the clone stamp. In this case, I'm going to probably start right about here and we're just gonna move and work our way up. We're just kind of like try to blend it in. Things can kind of be wonky a little bit sometimes. And you can even bring down the hardness and that way it's a little bit more smooth like. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly get rid of this. Don't want to bore you guys by, you know, this whole process, it's gonna take a little bit, but yeah, gonna do this, I'll be right back. So I got rid of the wax melter and I cleaned up the notebook. But there's one more thing, one more thing that I wanna to add to this photo that's gonna make it that much better. And that is making it seem like the lantern's actually turned on, like there's a glow that's coming from it. And how I can do that is I'm gonna create a new layer and then I'm going to go to lens distortions that I have here. I'm going to stretch that out fairly wide. And you can always readjust later, but just in case. Now we're going to change that screen blend mode to screen. Screen blend mode. Can't talk today. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, we're going to change that opacity down to right around 20. And then we're going to there and if you notice there's a bunch of glow that's going on top of the lantern how we can fix this is by creating a mask there bring in your brush nice and wide and we're just gonna make it go away and I just want to do the top and I want to do these edges of these like handles here Just have to do the outside because there's not really going to be a glow on the outside. There we go. And then we'll bring that fill roughly right down to around 45 ish. And it's very, very subtle. So, as before and after, the little glow there, but. It's very subtle, but it just adds that nice little touch that just makes it that much better. So now all I have to do is go up to file, click save, 
and now it's being shipped straight off the Lightroom. Which pretty much now I can make some micro adjustments or I can crop it to however I want to, maybe crop it for Instagram, export it and then put it up on there, whatever. But that is pretty much it, that's how I build and tell a little story with just things laying around my house and you can do this with anything and as you can see it doesn't take a lot to be creative with lighting or what you have to tell a story, you just gotta think outside the box. But anyways, if you like this video, this vlog. This was a vlog. It's been forever since I've done anything vlog related. Like, it's been a long time. And it was like starting fresh. It was, it was really, really weird. But it definitely needs to happen a lot more. And it's going to. It's going to. But anyways, if you like hanging out with me today, remember to destroy the like button. Like, straight up, just blow it up. It makes a huge difference and every ounce counts. It is all appreciated. And of course, hit up the comment section below. We can talk, converse, be friends, talk coffee, maybe talk some sets and some scenes that you would like to put together, you know. And of course, if you haven't yet, definitely subscribe. And don't forget, just explore. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.